Nin explains the rules of Olympic fencing. Fencing, sometimes referred to as Olympic fencing, is a combat sport that is contested between two people with swords. A word of warning before you continue to watch this video. Don't blink. Olympic level fencers are bullet fast and you'll need quick reflexes just to watch fencing, let alone play it. The contest is staged on a strip known as the Piste and it measures 14 meters long and up to two meters wide. The Piste has a center line, on guard lines, warning lines and limit lines. The contest starts with both fencers on their on guard lines. The referee will issue sets of instructions and once he tells you to go, the clock starts. The aim of fencing is to contact your sword into the target area of your opponent whilst avoiding being hit yourself. Modern fencing is wired up electronically so that lights turn on if you strike the required area. This is to indicate to the referee and spectators who hit who first. If you hit the required area, you score one hit and the clock stops. The whole process starts all over again and for individual contests, you compete against another individual. Elimination matches are contested in three periods of three minutes each. Whoever scores 15 points first or who has the highest number of points after three periods wins. In team competition, you are part of a three-person team and you have to fight the three fencers on the opposing team. The contest is contested in nine periods of three minutes each. The highest score at the end of time wins. Huh, that was easy. I wish it was that simple, but it's not. Rather confusingly, Olympic fencing has three different disciplines, which are fought with three different weapons and have uniquely different rules from each other. But before I explain what those are, you need to know about one very important concept. Right of way. It's complicated, but put simply, if both fences hit at the same time, it's the person who is in an attacking position first, or who controls the initiative, or that fights more aggressively, is the fencer that is given the point. An attacking position is where an arm is extended and the tip of the blade is pointing at your opponent. To give yourself right of way, you can either attack first, fall short, where you make your opponent miss and then attack, parry and riposte, where you deflect an opponent's attack so they don't have the right of way, and then riposte, which is a counter attack, or beat, where you knock your opponent's blade away without warning and then score yourself. Okay, I got that. So what are the three disciplines? Number one, the foil. The foil is the most common discipline in fencing and is considered to be the most technical. The foil is the smallest and lightest of the three weapons and the target area is anywhere on the torso or back. In foil, you are only allowed to attack an opponent by thrusting with the tip of the blade. Hitting with the side of the sword doesn't count. The right of way rules apply here, so being able to parry and riposte accurately, especially with such a small target area, is key. Number two, the saber. The saber is the fastest of the three disciplines. The sword itself has a different handle and is slightly shorter than a foil. The target area is now anywhere above the waist. The saber is the only discipline where you are allowed to cut or slash with the side of your blade, as opposed to attacking with just the tip. This means that with the right of way, the increased target area and the ease of scoring, it is advantageous to attack first and ask questions later. Number three, the epée. If the saber was the fastest, the epée is considered to be the slowest by comparison. The epée is the biggest and the heaviest of the three swords, but the target area is now the entire body. Like foil, you must only attack with the tip of the blade, but unlike foil and saber, the epée is the only discipline where the right of way rules do not apply. So if both fences touch at the same time, both are awarded a point. With a longer and heavier sword and the whole body now being fair game, fences are now very cagey. They have to be selective when to attack as you can easily be exposed in epée. That's the bare bones of it all, but there's a couple of more things that you need to know before playing or watching fencing. For example, penalties. There are things you cannot do in fencing, such as stepping off the piece during play, turning your back on your opponent, or using your non-playing hand. A yellow card indicates a warning, a red card indicates that your opponent is awarded a point, and a black card signifies that you have been disqualified from the contest. Non-combativity. On the rarest of occasions, 
both fencers will refuse to attack each other. If the referee feels that neither fencer is making any effort to attack, he will stop the clock and declare non-combativity or non-combativeness. He will end the period and a new period will begin. This is a strategic move, particularly in the team composition, to force an opponent to attack more aggressively in the next period, especially if they're down on points. If you found this video at all helpful, please like, share and subscribe. It takes me ages to make one of these things and good karma is very much appreciated. If you're also on Reddit, you can post this video and discuss it there. But in the meantime, enjoy fencing.